Okay, whoa, this is weird. All right, hey guys, welcome back to the channel, or welcome if you are new here. It's been a while since I said that. There's definitely no doubt I've taken a little bit of a hiatus from YouTube. We're not gonna get into that today. A lot of changes have been going on around here, but today is all about some new family members. And before we even get into those new family members, I need to introduce you to someone else. Now this may not quite be my return video yet. I did want to take this time to introduce you to the newest member of our family before these jellyfish we're about to get. We're gonna get there. So I'd like for everyone officially to meet Duke, our new golden retriever. Uh, he's a little tired right now. I just woke him up from a nap. Um, to say the least, we've been busy with him, but with getting a new dog, it's time to get some new fish. I have not said that in a while. So if you aren't new here and you've been around for a while, you will remember this aquarium. This is a jellyfish aquarium. Yes, today we're going to be finally resetting up this tank and getting jellyfish again. I've been wanting to get jellyfish again for a while. It's currently November, the weather's cooling down, and jellyfish love colder weather. They thrive a little bit below room temperature. So I thought this would be the perfect time to take another look at this two gallon all-in-one jellyfish art aquarium, order some jellyfish and get this thing going because when it's set up, it looks awesome. And jellyfish are fairly low maintenance. I can totally take this on. I already have a thriving 120 gallon reef tank. Um, you guys probably haven't seen that for a hot second. Everything in there is doing awesome. We're probably due for an update video on that soon. But today's about the jellyfish. So let's take a deeper look at this two gallon jellyfish art aquarium. This is an all-in-one tank, meaning everything from filtration to lighting is all built in. Now directly beneath the aquarium itself, we have this little equipment box which contains the LED light bulb that shines up through the aquarium to light up our jellyfish, as well as an air pump which runs the filtration system. So this tank is completely contained, and that's one of the things I really like about it. Maintenance is super easy. Luckily, because this aquarium is so self-contained, setup is very easy. The first thing we have to do is get some water. Now jellyfish are saltwater invertebrate, meaning we're obviously gonna need some salt water to keep them in. Now you can make salt water a few different ways. You can even buy it ready-made from a fish store, which I highly recommend if this is your first time keeping jellyfish. I have a reverse osmosis system. It's this ugly water filtration unit in my garage, and it basically purifies tap water to nothing, to just pure water. Then we'll go ahead and take a high quality aquarium salt and mix that into that clean, fresh water until it's all dissolved. And then using a hydrometer, a refractometer, or this battery powered salinity meter, we are gonna wait until the salinity reaches 1.023, which is the perfect specific gravity for jellyfish. And now that our water is all mixed and ready to go, let's fill this aquarium up so we can start the cycle and get that much closer to bringing our jellyfish home. Now jellyfish are very low maintenance fish. After all, I mentioned this tank is only two gallons. In fact, if we flip it over and look at the filtration system, it is very simple as well. This rear part is the filtration system and if we reach down in here, we have a very large sponge this will be our mechanical and biological filtration. We will also add some cycled media from my other saltwater tank in here to help this cycle just a little bit faster. You'll also notice there's no decor in here. They are jellyfish, they don't need substrate, and they also don't need rocks, coral, really anything except water. So I'm gonna take our pre-mixed saltwater and just begin dumping this into the aquarium. And we'll know the water level is full as soon as it hits this maximum water line, which is hidden in the back of the filtration compartment. With the aquarium full, I've set it off to the side and we're gonna set up the filtration system next. Taking a look in this cluttered base station, I promise it's not as messy as you would think. We have the light bulb right here and the air pump located right here. We'll plug the light bulb in and then this entire aquarium sits right on top. Flipping around to the rear of the aquarium, we have an air control valve and then this is the hose coming from the filtration unit. We will plug these right on in. This is how we will adjust the bubbles coming out of the aquarium in order to not toss our jellyfish around like bean bags. Here is the main power cord that we just plug into the wall. And just like that, the tank is set up. So I went ahead and placed the tank on this upper little decorative shelf. It holds the two gallon tank perfect. And this is where it's gonna be while it cycles. Coming up a little closer, we can see some design accents up here, but when we remove the lid, this is where the magic happens. So this is that filtration compartment. As you can see, that tiny little ripple in the surface is actually what's creating a circular pattern throughout the water. 
and that's what's gonna keep our jellyfish suspended. You'll notice this back chamber has a little empty spot and what we're gonna do there is put some cycled media from my other aquarium, which is likely gonna be some of these smaller little reef rock rubbles. You can't see them because the fish are in the way. But I'm gonna take some small pieces of aquarium rock that has been cycling in this saltwater tank, put that in our jellyfish tank to seed the aquarium with that beneficial bacteria the jellyfish are gonna need to survive. Then once that's in, we're gonna wait a little bit, add some small invertebrae, probably like these little snails or hermit crabs right here, that will go ahead and kickstart the nitrogen cycle. Now if you haven't read up about the nitrogen cycle for saltwater aquariums, I would highly recommend you do that, and that will prepare you to get your tank all set up for jellyfish. Now in the meantime, while the tank cycles, I wanted to show off this little remote. This is what allows you to turn off your lights as well as change them to any color you want. It doesn't show up great on camera. I promise it looks so much better in person. But without further ado, we just have to sit here, wait for this tank behind me to cycle, and then as soon as it cycles or in the very near future, we're gonna go ahead and order our jellyfish. Now a quick rundown of the nitrogen cycle is right now there's no bacteria really in this water. It's kind of sterile to say. We're gonna get some of that beneficial bacteria in there running through the system that when our jellyfish are introduced, they're gonna eat, they're gonna poop, and we need good bacteria to break down that poop into not toxic ammonia. If you have ammonia in your aquarium, your jellyfish are gonna die. So we're gonna wait for that nitrogen cycle to establish. Once it's established, we're gonna hop on over and order our jellyfish. Now also in the meantime, while this aquarium cycles, we're gonna monitor for things like algae growth. We're also gonna test the water for the pH, ammonia, nitrites, and nitrates to make sure those are all in a normal range for a saltwater aquarium. And we're also gonna be topping off the aquarium with RODI water. You don't wanna to top off a saltwater aquarium with salt water. Water evaporates, salt doesn't. If you leave this tank long enough, fresh water is gonna evaporate and your salinity is gonna rise. We don't want that with jellyfish. They are sensitive to salinity changes. So we're gonna be topping this tank off with fresh water as it evaporates. Hopefully that's not that big of an issue. It does have a lid on it. But regardless, I will see you guys in a few weeks and we're gonna order our jellyfish. Okay, whoa. So after what probably just felt like a second for you guys is actually a couple weeks real time. And thanks to a couple different things such as this API master test kit right here, some Biospira, a little blue leg hermit crab, and some cycles filter media, our jellyfish aquarium is officially ready for jellyfish. But real quick, before we actually get into ordering our jellyfish, I do wanna go over the tank's parameters real quick. We're sitting at a 1.23 salinity. The tank water is 69 degrees, which is perfect for our jellyfish. Ammonia is at zero, which we like to see. Our nitrates are below five, our nitrites are zero, and our pH is sitting just around 7.8. So really the only thing we have to do to get ready for jellyfish is change maybe half to one gallon of water, uh, get some fresh water in there just because why not, and I think it's time to get these jellyfish. Now I've been looking at a couple websites for these guys right here, but I landed on one simply because it had great reviews and it was pretty cheap. I've ordered from Jellyfish Art in the past and had no issues, but I wanted to try somewhere else. And that's gonna bring us to Jellyfish Warehouse. So Jellyfish Warehouse looks very similar to Jellyfish Art in the sense of they sell sustainably aquaculture jellyfish. If we go over to the Jellyfish tab, you can actually see they have a pretty big variety of jellyfish. We have moon jellyfish, fried egg jellyfish, Aussie spotted jellyfish, and so many more. I actually didn't know there were so many types of jellyfish. Now all these guys down here look a little bit more advanced than what we're going for right now and most of them are sold out for that matter. Even though these bay nettle jellyfish do look really cool, we're going to be taking a look at the moon jellies. Now because I do want a little bit more than one, I'm going to be going to their jellyfish bundles. I think getting started with three jellyfish is the perfect amount. So right over here we have three moon jellyfish. If you want to pause the video, you can read a little bit more about them. I kept these guys before, so I don't think I need too much information other than the fact that these guys are bred in captivity, which is extremely important. We don't want jellyfish that are caught from the wild. Moon jellyfish are really easy to breed in captivity, so captive bred is a plus one in my book. Adding these guys to the cart, we're gonna make sure we agree that our tank is cycled because it is. We're gonna go ahead and move to checkout. I'm obviously not gonna show you guys my address, but I will let you know the total in one moment, which came out to exactly $102, including shipping. So our jellyfish were 64 bucks. Shipping was an extra 38. These guys will be arriving overnight. Without further ado, let's check out, and I'll catch you in, I guess, two days when these guys come in the mail. And we are back with not one, but two surprises. So first off, elephant in the room, or jellyfish in the room. Um, our package just arrived, containing our three live jellyfish, but, this also arrived, which is the food we're gonna be feeding our jellyfish. Now, jellyfish eat a wide variety of foods. There's prepared jellyfish food, which is like a dry food. There's live baby brine shrimp, which I did in the past. So labor intensive, so annoying. And then there's this, which I've actually never tried before, but let's 
take a look. So this food was actually the same price as the dry jellyfish food, and I figured this would be a little bit better for them. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a try. If you want to hear a little bit more about this, I'll actually leave a link in the description of this video. But this is instant baby brine shrimp. So this is baby brine shrimp, which is a very high protein food for jellyfish. They go crazy for this stuff. Well, I don't, I guess they don't really go crazy. They're jellyfish, they just, they don't really know what's going on. But this stuff is supposed to be super nutritious and have all the vitamins, fats, and nutrition that they need to survive. So I've heard a lot of people recommend this for jellyfish. It's very easy. You just add some to some water, mix it up, and then broadcast feed it in the tank. So if you want to learn a little bit more about the instant baby brine shrimp, like I said, there'll be a link in the description of this video because I've never used it before. So you're going to learn right here with me. But now for the fun part, our jellyfish. Now I did a one gallon water change on the jellyfish tank behind me just to make sure everything was all ready for these guys. I also went ahead and tested for salinity and temperature and all that again, and all was well. So right here, it looks like we have a heat pack on top, which is good, it is a little chilly outside. Take off the little styrofoam lid, and here are our jellyfish. So inside's basically just a bag of water, but if you look close down here at the bottom, are our three jellyfish just pulsing away. They're obviously gonna be hard to see on camera. I mean, they look literally just like water, but they're down there, I promise. So I'm gonna go ahead and float this bag in the aquarium to start getting the temperature, you know, equalized. These guys do feel a little cold, but they do enjoy that. They seem to be doing good pulsating away. So we're gonna pop this bag in the tank to float and I'll be back in about 30 minutes and we'll drip acclimate them. 30 minutes later for me, a snap of the fingers for you, our jellyfish are temperature acclimated to their new aquarium. But now we have to do something a little different and drip acclimate them to get them used to the water parameters. I'm sure they're very similar, but it's always a good idea, especially with sensitive marine invertebrate, to go ahead and drip acclimate them. So I'm gonna transfer them to this little container right here and just drip some water from the tank into this for maybe 15, 20 minutes, and then we'll introduce them to the aquarium. Now that these guys have been acclimated, I thought I would bring you in a little bit deeper into the tank so you could see kind of what's going on in here. But I think what I'm gonna do, because jellyfish are so sensitive and these guys were just delivered next day air, I'm just gonna dump the shipping water along with the water we just acclimated them with. I went ahead and dumped out about half of their water and put half of my water in. So we should be pretty good on that. At least when it comes to diluting whatever was harmful in the bag. But I'm just gonna go ahead and slowly tip these guys out because I don't wanna expose them to air. So we're gonna ever so gently let these guys fall right out into their new home. Now it's a possibility these guys will sink to the bottom, float to the top, do whatever as they get used to their new tank. However, in the next few hours, they should stay pretty mid water column. Now I think if this video is teaching you guys anything about keeping marine invertebrate or even marine fish in general, it's that this is not a quick process. It is 24 hours later, patience is definitely key here. Our jellyfish, you can kind of see them right there, are in their new home and so far are doing really well. So they went ahead and acclimated, they hung out towards the bottom for the first couple hours and then they gradually moved into the you know, water column. Um, I have right here their food, which is that food we saw earlier, those baby brine shrimp. So we're gonna be feeding these guys very shortly. But I do just wanna talk about the jellyfish first. So they did just come in the mail, they did just undergo shipping, which is very stressful on an animal and one of them isn't doing so hot. Two of them are doing amazing, pulsing, looking beautiful. One of them might not have taken shipping quite as well as the others, unfortunately. So while the other two are pulsing and doing their thing and moving around, unfortunately, one of them is kind of flying saucering or you know, just kind of flattening out. Um, I'm not quite sure what's going on with him. He doesn't have quite as many tentacles as the others do. So I'm just gonna be monitoring him for a few days. I'm hoping he just needs some time to acclimate to the water. Luckily, the other two are doing good. I did go ahead and email Jellyfish Warehouse asking for their opinion, and they said it could just be due to a salinity difference. I'm gonna give him a few days and check back in on him. But let's take a closer look at the tank once more and get these guys some food. Okay, so without further ado, it is time to finally feed our jellyfish for the first time in their new home. So jellyfish are broadcast feeders, meaning they just eat throughout the day in the water column. So we're gonna broadcast feed that baby brine shrimp. I'm gonna take the included scoop that came with it and I'm gonna take about half a scoop and disperse it throughout the water column. You're gonna see a big puff of what looks like debris. I'm gonna mix it around a little bit 
but all of that is actually baby brine shrimp. Now, as that floats down to the jellyfish, let's take a little closer look and we can actually see them eating. Now, it might be a little difficult for you to see, but how this works is those fine tentacles sting the brine shrimp and then draw it into one of their four stomachs. So as these guys float through the water, the food is attached to them and then slowly makes its way inside of them. Now jellyfish really don't have brains, so they kind of rely on themselves just aimlessly bouncing through the water to eat, which is why in a small aquarium like this, the food is concentrated enough to make sure they all get enough to eat, and you don't have to spot feed these guys. So I know it looks like it just snowed in this aquarium, but these guys are actually gonna eat all of this food within the next 30-ish minutes. But I'm just gonna let these guys be. They're gonna go ahead and eat their food, and that's pretty much it for feeding jellyfish. They're not as difficult as someone may think. Now I know this has been a work in progress, but that right there concludes setting up the jellyfish tank, ordering our jellyfish, receiving our jellyfish, acclimating our jellyfish, and feeding our jellyfish. If you guys have any jellyfish care questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comments below, and I'll be sure to answer them. Once these guys are acclimated and eating well, and you can stay on top of tank parameters, they're really not too difficult. But that is gonna be it for this video. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you wanna order jellyfish for yourself, check out the tank or any jellyfish accessories. I will have all those links in the comments down below. Once again, thank you so much for watching and good.